Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this, know that I appreciate it. Uh, I won't be before you long. Got some things I got to do, so uh, I'm going to make this quick. And besides, I'm a little hot with this sweater on, even though I've got the fan blowing on me, which you may hear. I'm not sure. But um, today's blog is up on, on uh, my daughter's mentor page. And um, I will make sure to put the link in the, in, below in the description box. But today's blog and the video, the blog, are both entitled Victim, Victimizer, or Victorious. And I came to that because I have on many occasions witnessed someone living in the victim lifestyle um, for whatever reason. They were whether it was due to an illness, whether it was due to a financial hardship, um, whatever the case may be, they were living the victim lifestyle. And there is a difference between being overcome by an illness or being um, hit with a financial hardship and then wallowing, or I should say, not and then, but or wallowing in that situation. Um, I know that with illness, it's very difficult to specific, you know, Especially, I mean, especially depending upon the illness, it's difficult to come out of it if you ever come out of it, but you don't have to live that lifestyle. You don't have to live in that lifestyle of victim. You don't have to wallow in your own filth. Um, and I've always wondered why people do that, why they choose to wallow in it versus trying to do something about it. And I'm not sure if it's because they like the pity and the attention or, like I said before, if they just don't see a way out of it. I'm, I'm not sure what their mindset is. Um, and, of course, when you ask someone that, they hit that defense button. So you may not get a real, true answer as to why. Um, I know of someone who, because of their illness, they instead of seeking the help that they need to seek um, and then also doing their part that there's you know doing their part in, in getting better or maintaining they insist on just saying what was me you know I can't get out of this I'm not ever going to get out of this I'm going to always be sick so what's the point of me doing anything there is no cure for this so what is the point of me doing anything um, so this is just where I'm going to be and sometimes I'm sure it's a mental thing there's a mental block there because illness can wear on you I understand that 100% but at other times I wonder if they're just giving up they're just giving up you know it's not pity it's not attention they just don't have the will to move forward and that's unfortunate it's really unfortunate because God's word says that we are to be the head and not the tail, that we are to be the lender and not the borrower, that we are indeed victorious, that we are um, to, that he came, that Jesus came so that we may have life and life more abundantly. So that is what the, that's the kind of life that I want to live. That's the kind of life that I want everyone to live, not just life, but life more abundantly because that is, that was his purpose. He wanted us to be saved and he wanted us to be happy and he wanted us to live the life that we were so graciously given abundantly um, but then we also have the other spectrum of that we have those that are the victimizers those who don't appear to be happy unless they're making someone else miserable and I don't understand um, the mindset behind that either what benefit do you get from making others unhappy, from making others suffer? Is there a mental disconnect? Is there a heart disconnect? Um, is there an emotional disconnect? What is it that makes you okay with making others feel bad? Um, is it the, you know, the age-old cliche, misery loves company? What is it about life that makes you so pitiful? that you have to make others feel less than. What elevation do you get from that? 
I've never understood that. So I've never understood the victim mentality. I've never understood the victimizer mentality. However, I am so glad that I do understand the victor's mentality. I do understand living victoriously. I do understand being the head and not the tail. I do understand being the lender and not the borrower. I do understand wanting to live my life more abundantly and actively attempting to do that. And that's what I want for others. That's truly what I want for others. I want not only for you to, to walk in your purpose that's been given to you, but I also want you to live life to its fullest because it is a gift. It is a blessing. And it's not by accident that you are here. Now, for those very important pieces that I left out of the first video that I did, there are scriptures, many scriptures, and I won't read any of them, but I will give you all of them. Uh, one specifically, which is the one that I mentioned about, did I mention the man living by the pool of Bethesda for years? Maybe I didn't. But the man lived by the pool of Bethesda without ever getting into the pool. It is said that for once every few years there was an angel that came to stir the water and the first person in the water would be healed of whatever it was that ailed them. And this man lay by the pool for years, for years, never making it to the pool. He lay by the pool, lame, never making it in. And Jesus came to him and said, asked him, do you want to be healed? And the man answered and gave his excuse as to why he was not healed. And some would say that at some point in his years, I believe it was 38 years, that he lay by that pool, lame, at some point he should have been able to maneuver himself somehow to the edge of that pool so that when that angel came and stirred that water, he would roll right in. Be the first to roll right in and be healed of what ailed him. So that scripture is John 5 and 6. John chapter 5 verse 6. That's the victim scripture. He lay as a victim by the pool of Bethesda for all of those years, wallowing in whatever filth he wallowed in, begging for whatever he begged for, relying on others to be his help. When, in actuality, he had the ability at some point, somehow, to be healed. Uh, the, victor the victimizer, uh, the victimizer scripture is Exodus chapter 9. Just go through chapter 9 and it talks all about how Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not let the Israelites go. And then the outcome of that is a well known story in the Bible. Read it. Exodus chapter 9. And then we have the victorious scriptures. The scriptures of the victors. And those are Psalm 71 and 20. Psalm 17 and 7, and then also Psalm 100, and 100, verse 5. Chapter 100, verse 5. Then we also have 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, and 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. Then we also have James 1, verse 12, and Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. So that's Psalms 71 and 20, 17 and 7, 105. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, and 4, 8 through 9. We also have James 1 and 12, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Read all of those. Those are our scriptures for the victor, the victorious. With that, peace and blessings. Remember to walk in your purpose and know that I appreciate you.